Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. So if you didn't already know, Switch emulation on Apple Silicon and Macs is pretty amazing. However, by far the biggest performance issue is shader compilation stutter. And basically what this is, is that when you run certain animations for the first time, the game will pause until the shader is compiled. Once that shader is cached, it means that you won't have to compile that shader again. But it basically means that every time you run a new Nintendo Switch game through Ryujinx on a Mac, it's likely that the performance of the first few hours is going to be a pretty stuttery mess. However, what if I told you that there was a way to download other people's shader cache that's already been generated and that's going to have a huge impact on stutter on Ryujinx on a Mac. So today we're going to be looking at a project called Ryusak. This is pretty much an essential tool if you want to run Ryujinx on a Mac. It allows you to download the shaders that have been generated by other users and it's also an excellent way to integrate mods into Ryujinx. However, the issue at the time of recording is that Ryusak does not have a native macOS build. But that's not going to stop us today, thanks to the help from Discord user Genya, who helped show me how to build this and get it working on macOS. So today I'm going to show you the full tutorial on how to do this and also how to get game modding working too. So if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider subscribing and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming tutorials. So the first thing that we need to do is to install Homebrew. So I'm going to leave a link in the description for this website, brew.sh. And then what we're going to do is to click on this button on this line here. And that's going to copy this particular command into the clipboard. Then what we're going to do is to click on the top right hand side of the screen and then type in the word terminal. And then click on the top entry. Once we have terminal open, we're going to control click on the blank space and then paste that command that we just copied earlier. Press return. Now we're going to type in a password. So if you press on your keyboard and you don't see anything here, don't worry about it. Just type your password out in full. Just make sure that your password is correct. Type it in and then press return. Here's just confirming that we are sure we want to install Homebrew, press return. So this is going to download and install Homebrew, just wait for that to finish. It will take a few minutes depending on the speed of your internet. So now that Homebrew has installed, what we need to do is to copy and paste these lines here. Just highlight these three lines, control click and press copy. And then what we're going to do is to control click here and then paste them. And this helps to set what's called the path, press return. And then if we type in the word brew, then this is going to show up correctly. So now that we've installed Homebrew, what we need to do is to install something called NPM. So I'm going to type in the command brew space install npm. So this is going to install node package manager and this is going to help us to build Ryusak on this computer. So anyway, we're going to press return and then this is going to install npm using homebrew. So now that's installed, what we're going to do is to download Ryusak. So I'm going to leave a link in the description for the Ryusak GitHub page. And once you follow the link, what you basically need to do is to go to the address bar, control click, and then copy this web address. This is so that we can download Ryusak. So within terminal, we need to make a clone of this. So we're going to type in git clone and space here, and then we're going to control click and then paste that web address from GitHub. And this is going to make a clone of the Ryusak application onto our computer. So just press return. And basically what that's done is it's made a copy of Ryusak into our user folder. So basically we're going to change directory into Ryusak. So CD space Ryusak. And you can see here we're in the Ryusak folder that was just created. So here we're going to type in the command npm space install. And then press return. So now once that's installed, we can type in the command npm start. So type in the command npm space start and then press return. And then this is going to launch Ryusak. So here it's saying if you use Ryusak, you agree never to ask for support. Make sure not to talk about this, especially in the Ryujinx Discord server. That's because shader caches are a grey copyright area. If you do need support, then click on the Discord server link on the top right hand side of the app. Here we're going to click I agree to the terms of service and press OK. And now this has successfully installed. So just be aware that you need to have this terminal window open in order for this to be running. Also, if you ever need to run this again, you can always open up a new terminal window, CD Reusac, and then npm start just as we did before in order to open up this window again. So now that we have Reusac installed, all we need to do is to change some of the configuration in order to see our Mac version of Reujinx. So click onto the configuration box here and then click add additional configuration. And then we're going to select our .config Reujinx. Press OK. And basically what we want to do is to navigate to that Ryujinx folder. So we can't actually see it through this mini Finder window. We have to locate it on a full version of Finder first. So I've opened up Finder and I've gone to my home folder and I want to find my .config Ryujinx folder. So in order to do that, we're going to press the key combination Command Shift Dot. 
and that's going to reveal all of the hidden folders on both on Finder and also on the desktop here. And what we're going to do is to navigate to our .config folder. So this is a hidden folder with several configuration files inside it. So double click. And here we're going to have the config folder for Reujinx. So what you want to do is to basically drag and drop this to the top of your favorites bar like this. And that means that we have a shortcut which will always appear in any window. So now if we go back to Reusac, we can see the Reujinx folder has been added to the favorites on the top left. And then what we can do is to press the open button here. We're going to call this Reujinx Mac or whatever you want, press OK. And now it's basically detected all of our games and also the artwork as well. So this tool is extremely powerful. Let's select a game, for example, Splatoon 3. The cool thing about Reusac is that it shows us our local shader count for Reujinx. So I've got 1,337 shaders, which have been cached from my previous gameplay. However, Reusac has a repository where they hold their own shaders too. And that shows that they have 6,597 shaders, which is a hell of a lot more than our local shader count. So if we download these, then that means that we can take advantage of other people's shaders and we can reduce a substantial amount of stutter. So what I'm gonna do here is click the button download shaders and then this is going to start that download process from their own repository here it's saying success press ok and now our local shader count has increased to the same amount what's useful as well is that we can also check this by clicking this button open shader cache folder and you can see the shader cache included within the reujinx config folder here so you can have reujinx open at the same time as running reusec they kind of work in conjunction with each other and what i can do is go down here and then open up splatoon 3. so now that i've downloaded these new shaders it's going to start compiling all of the shaders that we've just downloaded. So depending on how many there are, this might take a bit of time, but basically it's definitely going to be worth it because although the shader is going to be compiled at the beginning, it's going to take a little bit of time. It's not going to be compiling whilst we're playing the actual game. So this is going to make gameplay a lot smoother. So basically what I've noticed with a game like Splatoon 3 is that there is no more shader compilation stutter. Now that doesn't mean that there's no stutter at all anymore. However, shader compilation stutter is basically a thing of the past once all of those shaders have been downloaded at the beginning. In my last video, I also talked about Fire Emblem Three Houses, and basically when you used a special move, it would stutter and pause, especially whenever you did a special move for the first time and the shader needed to be compiled. However, now that we've downloaded all the shaders at the beginning, doing a special move now is relatively straightforward and we don't have to do any kind of waiting or no more pauses. And it just runs a lot smoother and faster without any of that shader compilation stutter. So another very cool feature of Reusac is integrated mod support. So whilst you're looking at your library, you might notice that you can click on this download mod button. It's gonna ask us to select a version and then go ahead and download any of these mods. For example, 60 FPS, it's automatically gonna download and put the file into the the correct place. However, if you have a game that doesn't support integrated mods, then you can download the mods manually. So whenever you load up a game, it automatically loads up the category from Game Banana. And today I'm going to show you how to install a mod. For example, this mod for Bayonetta 3 basically changes all of the button prompts from the Nintendo Switch default into Sony PlayStation button prompts for say the DualShock 4 or the DualSense. So once you've selected your mod, just go ahead and press the download button and you're going to download a 7z file. Find the file within Finder and then double click to extract. Enter the extracted folder and then basically find the folder that you need to copy. Control click on the folder and then press the copy button. Then go back into Reusec and then press the open mods directory. Control click on the blank space and then press paste item. So now that we're in game, you can see that the button glyphs have been changed and it now matches my DualSense controller. So if I get any quick time prompts, then those are gonna be a lot easier to read using my Sony PlayStation controller. So anyway, that is how you get Reusac working on the Apple Silicon Mac. And hopefully this is gonna help a lot of people reduce the shader compilation stutter on their Reujinx games. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.